final leg of the expedition will be the toughest. Where the hell are we? Whoa. As the eight explorers try to summit the Juno ice cap. That's the worst rock here. With the near blizzard conditions. Just white out conditions. <laughs> turn their climb into a fight for survival. Hanson! What does it take to conquer Alaska? We gotta move, gotta move. Here we go. Eight expert explorers are putting their lives on the line. No, no, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. In a relentless test of survival. They're on a 10-leg journey covering 3,000 miles of Alaska's wildest terrain. Like the original National Geographic explorers, they'll live off the land and use only what gear they can carry to survive. Oh, nice. There's a bear right there, look. The rules are simple. One, two. On each leg, they'll have just 72 hours to reach their extraction point. Do it. You gotta move. You gotta go, man. Or risk getting left behind. Why would any man accept this challenge? Why do you go out and test yourself? Because you can't. Why do you climb mountains? Because it's there. If you have to ask that question, you will never understand the answer in the first place. Marty! Oh, don't go this way. The eight explorers are about to embark on the final leg of their expedition, up the treacherous ice-capped ridges east of Juneau. Spirits are high, despite their grueling 40 days of surviving Alaska's wilderness. Exhausted and hungry, they now have just 72 hours for their final mission, reaching the top of the Juneau ice cap. Who's got the map? I do. Here we go again, boys. We've gone through a lot. We've seen a lot. We've experienced a lot. But it's not over. This one's hard. This one's tough. Last one. Last one, man. It's gonna be the big one. I'm not gonna be happy till we're all eight standing on top of that mountain. Starting just 300 feet above sea level, the men will climb through a thicket of woods to reach an ice-covered ridge line, and then follow it to the summit of Observation Peak atop the Juno ice cap. Elevation, 4,600 feet. There's our glacier and our final peak. With winter quickly approaching, Marty's concerned. This weather is notoriously bad. This weather is the worst weather in Alaska. That looks like a very prominent ridge line. That looks cool. Yeah. Above yeah. the timber line. Yeah. We got a ways to go. Well, Today's I... challenge is just getting up there, so. As they plan their route to the top, Expert climber Willie Pretty spots a feature of interest. It shows uh, something on this map in the saddle between the two peaks there. It looks like an old base camp, maybe. As with many mountains, there's a base camp to offer shelter to any climbers who might need it. So we can see the camp from the ridge. We should be able to, yeah. It's decided. The first objective will be getting to that base camp by nightfall. This is October in Alaska. We all know what that's I know, about, man. Huh? It's going to be fun. Let's rock and roll. They have no idea that a massive winter storm is settling over the mountain. One that will bring blinding snow and freezing temperatures. Watch out, these are wet. After a steep climb, nice. mountain man Marty Rainey, his son Matt, and Tyler Johnson have reached the edge of the woods. Ahead, the summit they hope to conquer. Getting that first look at the mountain in its full glory, a little bit intimidating. I mean, we got bad weather on top of a very serious mountain. A gain in elevation means a drop in temperature. Here, it's 37 degrees. Above the timber line, it's below 15. I gotta layer up, it's getting cold. Yeah, I'm gonna do the same. Obviously, in this situation, we are gonna put on every piece of clothing that we own. Probably wishing we had brought more. 
Alright boys, upward and onward, beat the weather. This could get crazy. Call you, Tyler. Tyler leads the men out of the woods, straight toward the snow-capped ridgeline, and into the storm. Lower in elevation, Iditarod champion Dallas Seavey, his brother Tyrell, and Brent Sass are collecting water. We're getting high. I don't know how many more creeks we'll run into, but I think we fill up our water bottles now that we're getting closer to the top. Yeah. This is a very diverse state. When you're traveling in Alaska, sometimes you have bountiful resources in one place, and a matter of hours later, you're going to have nothing. So you have to be aware of where you're heading, what you have now that you might not have later, and be ready to bridge that gap. So here, water is going to be the big concern. It's not that there's not moisture where we're going, but it's frozen. So getting water down here is going to be very important because collecting water on the mountain could be nearly impossible. Get a move on and check it out up there. As the CV crew make their way up the mountain at an elevation of 1,400 feet, Willie and Austin's beeline route has landed them in the middle of the snowstorm. It's got to be at least 25 to 30 knot wind. Yeah, it's real gusty. These gusts take you by surprise and about blow you off the track. It's a whiteout. Visibility is less than 200 feet making it nearly impossible to plot a course to the base camp. Yeah, it looks like this goes around this way, huh? Yeah, better path. I can't see anything, really. Where, where yeah. are we heading, man? Let's take a second and see if we can get out of the wind here a bit more and look at this map. Yeah, it's uh, dangerous out here. Yeah, I've done probably close to a 1,000 miles in those kinds of conditions over my career so far. And it's very hard to have reference points. It's very hard to keep yourself on track. Everything is white. There's no up, there's no down. That's really, really difficult traveling. So Austin and I wanted to leave some kind of breadcrumb trail. That way, all the other groups behind us, they're not going to have to recreate the wheel. They're going to follow the route that we're actually setting in. I think we had to start maybe doing some Karen trail markers for yeah. the other guys. Because this weather is getting worse, and it's just going to make it much more difficult for these guys when they get here. A Karen is an artificial pile of rocks. Oftentimes, two to three rocks that stick out. Obviously, this has been man-made. It's really good to find them on prominent little knolls or another rock that sticks up. The cairn itself is up and silhouetted against white sky or white whiteout because it makes it much more visible and it makes it a lot easier to actually follow the markers from marker to marker. Well, I've done this a few gazillion thousand times. Okay. You want to have them on a prominent point so that they're highlighted against snow, ideally, instead of other rocks. Okay. And you want them nice and stable so the wind's not going to blow them over. And usually you want to do three or four yep. rocks as traditional, each getting a little smaller, something like that. Boom. That was good. All right, let's roll. The plan is to leave the cairns every 500 feet as they go in hopes that the others will find them and follow. I'm going to put a marker right here in the snow from the sides just so that they know that this is where we came, and if it turns out that's not a good way, we can come back and knock it over. All right. Boy, this is like bad visibility today, isn't it? I can't really see too far. Let's maybe do another marker right on the top of this whole knob here, huh? Yeah. Further down the ridge line, Man, it's getting less, if anything. Yeah, it is. Wind is picking up big time. Dallas Tyrell and Brent are also caught in the storm. On either side, a sheer drop. When we busted out of the tree line and got into the little slow brush and then out of the rocks, it got horrendous. I mean, just whiteout conditions. We thought we were on the right ridge and just had to go with it and then fall on this ridge up. Pretty much, I think, all the way to the top, it's just gotten worse and worse. Absolute blizzard. The wind and snow are blinding. All they can do is hope they're following the right ridge. Yeah, this is the real deal right here. So we got what, like 70 feet of visibility when the wind isn't gusting? There is no navigation in this kind of weather. You just pick something like this ridge line we've been following, a very definite geological feature that you can follow down. And as long as we stay on the ridge line, we'll be fine. But if we wander off into the fog, forget it. Ooh. We're hoping it's not going that way. Holy smokes. You're gonna have to go around here. Yeah. Woo! That's a fall. These rocks have like a thick glaze of ice on it that hasn't blown away. And with this wind shuffling all this snow around and a little bit of new snow, it covers that with just this light fluff of snow and it makes the slipperiest possible surface ever. And it's it's killing us. 
Now there's no room for error up here. I mean, one bad step and you're off the edge of just who knows what. Every step up the icy ridge line, the men struggle to keep their traction. Man, this is real sketchy. The rocks are all glazed. Keep an eye on it. feet up on the Juno ice cap. Dallas Seavey, his brother Tyrell, and Brent Sasp are caught in a whiteout on an icy ridge line. I had a bit of a scary incident walking up just to ice and uh, slipped and rolled and slid down the mountain had my fingernails dug into that thing and I look behind me and you don't see anything. It's just white forever. You know, that's where you fall off cliffs. That's where bad things happen. I get your heart going all right. Yeah, it does. Whew. Nice work on getting stopped. This is winter. We always ask for winter. We're getting it right now. The men press on. But in these conditions, finding the base camp and the other explorers seems a long shot. Heads up. Loose rocks. Yes. Until. Hey, guys, we got a, a car and thing. These things are marking some sort of trail. They lead somewhere, huh? Signs of humans. <laughs> we were hiking up the mountain and not sure that we were on the right ridge. And the confirmation was when we saw the first Karen. And it immediately took me back to racing dogs. You're out on the frozen Bering Sea ice, just invisible everything around you. Complete ground storm, blowing snow, and you have a little trail marker to follow. And you've got the whole balance of your race swinging there. He just got put up. Somebody, I guess either Austin or Willie or... The Rainies and Tyler. It's a good sign. That's nice. You guys seeing more? No. My general sense is that it's this way since we came off the glacier. Yeah, we need to keep falling somewhere up in there. This ridge. I think we gotta find the next one before we really move on. Totally. I'll stay close to this one. I'll keep this one in sight. I'll keep each of you in sight. Alright. If one of you guys wants to go look for the next one. Okay. Let's go together and then when we start getting out of sight of Tyrell, if you haven't found the next one, I'll stop. And you can go within sight Perfect. ahead of me and we can we can cover way more ground like that. We basically employ the same strategy that myself, Tyrell, and Brent have all used in races where you work together, you stay within sight of one marker, you never leave that marker, because then you end up in Siberia. You get lost. <laughs> we will get out of your sight. Yeah, I'll come down a little ways, but I'm going to keep an eye on this one. Okay. Okay, all right, I'll wait right here. Okay. You want to go a little bit farther? Yep. We kind of leapfrogged out ahead, and we always stayed within sight of the Karen, within sight of each other, and looked for the next one. And sometimes that meant coming back and then trying it again. It's too far. I don't see anything. I can't see anything out there, man. I think we might be going too high up. Right, Want to try right. going down and do the same thing again? Yeah, let's do it. As long as your brother's still in sight. Yeah, he's still... I still got him. Hey! I got it! Now that they've found the next cairn, Tyrell can leave his post by the first one. I'm glad you found it when you did. I was getting really cold standing there in the wind. I had to get moving. Let's go the same general direction and just yep. try again. Let's do it. We'll keep you in sight, Dal. With new hope, Dallas's crew traces the path of the cairns. Meanwhile, a half mile behind them, Marty's team has begun their push up the icy ridge. The wind's picking up! The raging snowstorm has engulfed them. Visibility is near zero. Where the hell are we? We might have to make a snow cave or something. I mean, it's getting brutal. The vicious storm forces Marty's team to reevaluate the plan. They won't make the base camp by nightfall. How, how late do you think it is? It's hard to tell. I mean, we can't see more than 100 feet above us right now, so it's going to get dark fast. We know that. I hate to admit it, but I think we're lost. We really don't know where we are. There's only really one wise decision to make. Stop and build a camp, because you're kind of wandering aimlessly in the wilds of an ice cap. That's kind of dangerous. While it's still light, they need to find a spot to hunker down overnight. There wasn't a lot of opportunities for a campsite, but the wind's slamming us on the ridge. So we dropped down over the edge. We let the ridge line kind of act as a protector, a wind wall. Once clear of those 40-mile-per-hour winds, the guys start figuring out how to make a sturdy shelter. 
Because when I dig this out, it was kind of a well that was created in mountains where there's a lot of high wind. So we use that to our advantage. Hey, dude, we got enough loose snow here. We can build up some serious walls around this thing. You know, the weak part, we can definitely do some anchors in the rock, yeah. We're in limited gear. We have a tarp, a little bit of rope, and a gold pan. And it is a survival situation. Make no mistake about it. Been exposed to those elements and not moving, someone would die. Without question. This is going to be a wall, right? Yep. 1,020 uses for a gold pan. We got it. We nailed it. Hey, guys. Yeah. Look at this big snowball I just made. One, One two, three. No. Okay. The walls are up. The question is, how to make a roof. How do you anchor a tarp? There's no rocks, there's no trees, there's no stakes. So how do you anchor it? You lay snow on top of it. Hey, grab it. Yeah, yeah, grab it. Okay, I'm gonna get more balls. Yeah. Perfect, done. Okay, fix it inside, the party's over. Walla, shelter. You know, we got a lot of space in here. We'll be able to sleep comfortably. And uh, we'll be very warm. This is Mountaineering 101, man. Suffering in a bivouac. It's done well. Yeah, I know, man. The three bed down, hoping the storm breaks by morning. This is a good little setup, man. We're going to sleep well. Two miles up the ridge line, at an elevation of 2,400 feet, Willie and Austin's cairns have led the CB crew straight to them. We got a little break in the weather here. We might as well use it to our advantage before the stuff starts really coming down. The five men have given up on making it to the base camp. As daylight fades, they're forced to make shelter. It's looking good, guys. Our tarp is perfect size for us. We're gonna have plenty of room. Snow is one of nature's most wonderful insulators. It may be 45 below zero outside. If you dig in and construct a proper snow shelter, it's gonna be plus 30 inside. It's hugely warm and out of the weather conditions. It's a really amazing technology to understand if you're in snow country. Oh, that worked perfectly right there for that number. Hey, guys, get in here. Come on in, man. The tarp is just fine. Once safe from the elements, the men's thoughts turn to Marty, Matt, and Tyler. Best case scenario, they've made some sort of shelter, hunkered down, but it's not going to be a comfortable night. Out there in these conditions, it's not good to get separated. The group environment is key in these situations. You should be definitely traveling in a group, and when you get separated, the survival is, is, is a lot harder. The first night on this last expedition will be a long one. Winds batter the ridge at over 40 miles per hour. Day two, dawn breaks. But the storm doesn't. Temperatures drop below 15 degrees with the wind chill. Uh, doesn't look any better. That was a rough night. It was a brutal, brutal night on the mountain. But, you know, we signed up for adventure. You guys, you still got the summit fever? Yeah, yeah, we're going. All right. The weather has not let up, but we can't sit around here. I mean, obviously, we're going to break camp, look for that hut, and look for our fellow adventurers. Constant exposure to below freezing temperatures is starting to take a toll on the men. That was cold. Is that it? All right. Let's break it down, get moving. They need to find the base camp, or risks are coming to hypothermia. Let's go, man. This is it. Let's go. Summit, summit, summit. The camp is in a knob of the ridge at just over 4,000 feet. If they can get there, the men will be less than three miles away from their goal, the summit of Observation Peak. Elevation, 4,600 feet. Just gotta push through, guys. Gotta be worth it! Push on! Marty, Matt, and Tyler fight the brutal conditions and their own uncertainty. Uh, it's hard to even look out there, man. Hey, man, I see no signs of uh, any human activity up here, man. It's on this ridge somewhere. We're on the path. I mean, we just need to keep going in this direction. We need to do it fast. Whoa. Hey. That's a big one. After, you know, a half hour, 45 minutes, an hour, a couple hours of traveling, now I'm wondering, are we on the right ridge? We all saw it on the map. It's on this side. If they don't find the base camp soon, they'll have to turn back ending their expedition. God forbid, did we pass that hut? Is it a mile back? Is it 15 minutes back? Where is this hut? Where the hell are we? On the Juno ice cap, 
at 3,300 feet. Uh, we might have an issue here. Marty Rainey, his son Matt, and Tyler Johnson are battling through a snowstorm, desperate to find the base camp. I'm going to my feet for an hour. You know, I don't see any signs of human habitation up here, man, at all. Yeah, but, I mean, we are still going on this ridge. I mean, obviously, we're gaining some altitude. we got to be getting close. I'm opening this up for a discussion. I mean, dude, here's the discussion. We're just going to keep following this ridge. If it's the right ridge, we're going to follow in second. This is windy. Oh, my hands are froze solid. Yeah, dude, my fingertips are, uh, they're frosted. The men's continued exposure to 15-degree temperatures has Marty worried. It's serious. Everyone's freezing. I mean, literally freezing. Like you could die. Freezing. Hypothermic. All the forces are there for something to go wrong. Ooh. This is insane. Okay. Please be careful, yes. Oh, Please. Man. If they don't find the base camp soon, they'll have to turn around and retreat to the safety of the tree line. The danger is just too great. I uh, am personal friends with some mountain climbers that their bodies are still on Everest. Their bodies are still on McKinley. They didn't come back. Your ego is telling you, you know, let's get to the top. No matter what, the wiser man knows when he has to turn back. Oh, man. These rocks are coated in ice right now. Oh, they are. Please be careful, guys. Um, rocks. Watch out for falling rocks. I can't see anything. It's really slippery, Dad. And these rocks are loose. Oh. Gotcha. Hey, guys. I see a kid. Maybe it's a trail marker. It's got to be a trail marker, man. This only camp up here. It's got to lead the way, right? Let's head towards it. If there's one of these, there might be another. Let's slip around. Nobody in God's green earth, and in this case, nobody in God's white earth, is out here hiking, climbing, sightseeing, exploring, except our buddies. This has got to be the way to the hunt. I see another one, guys. Are you sure? Yeah. We gotta be getting close. You know, we're within a quarter mile, half mile. It's a huge lift for the men. They're on the right track. There's another one right there, dude, right on that freaking silhouette. All they have to do is follow the cairns, hopefully to base camp, before hypothermia sets in. I'm freezing, man, let's go. Further up the ridge, at 3,800 feet, Woo! explorers Brent Sass, Willie Pretty, Austin Manelik, and the CB brothers are on the move. I can't even open my eyes! It's going to be a challenge at this point. It feels like shards of glass hit me in the face! The wilderness blizzard conditions that we were facing were some of the worst I've ever seen. I can't see. You got snowflakes flying in your face and your eyes. Felt like we were skydiving naked without a parachute. This is pretty horrific. If it keeps this up, chances of summoning are next to nothing. They have to push on and find the base camp and shelter. Every fiber in your body is just trying to stay warm in one of these white ass. And without a way to dry out our gear and keep us at least safe from the elements, there's no telling how much trouble we could be in. You gotta be getting pretty close on this ridge. Let's cover some ground. And then a promising sign. Yeah, I think I see something through the mist up there. What is that? It looks like a pole straight up and down. That's a weather station. That's an old weather bottle. <laughs> nice job. We have to take care of ourselves, and to do that, we got to have some sort of shelter from this wind. Hey, guys, there's a building right up here. Seeing those buildings was kind of like a mirage. Uh, it seemed too good to be true. See if we can get in that yeah. thing. Yeah, get out of the wind. Very good to get out of this weather right now. The whole day had been tough traveling. It was getting dark. The blizzard was getting worse. We needed this now, and finally something went our way. But the men aren't out of the elements just yet. What? Yeah. Shoot, man. I hope there's something unlocked. Look at this. This one, too. It's got a code on it. It's locked. No, it's locked, too. This place is all just boarded up and locked up. Shoot, this has got a lock on it, too. Two hundred feet on the Juno ice cap. The situation is becoming desperate. This one's locked. <laughs> Willie, Austin, Brent, and the CB brothers have finally found the base camp. And this place is all just boarded up and locked up. Look at this. This one too. It's got a coat on it. But now they're locked out, stuck in the cold. Shoot, this has got a lock on it too. 
Hey, check this out. Trespassing in any locked or wired buildings is forbidden, but there's one that says round top building is unlocked. There's got to be something around here. That's a round top building right there. Go check it out. I'll see ya. Check that out. Check this out. No lock. Oh, oh yeah. It's frozen. Give it a good hard read. There we go. Hey, 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 hey. We are golden here. Hey, man, check this out. Plenty of room. <laughs> that Quonset hut at the old camp on the ridge line is pretty run down, pretty grim, pretty basic. But, you know, given our circumstance and where we were and what the weather was, that was five star accommodations. After scouring the shelter, they managed to find two working lanterns and an emergency stove which they quickly light for warmth. We were going to be living like kings in that place compared to a snow hole with only what we had on our backs. How you guys feeling? Good. Oh, a lot better now. Yeah. Man, it's must be 50 degrees warmer in here than outside. It's getting worse out there. I hope the rainies aren't far behind us because it's picking up. open the door and they go, hallelujah, boys, woo! It was a great little rendezvous. Hey, Just to be out of the wind, it seemed like a reward for what we persevered in, in the weather. Wow. You guys find any of the Cairns we cut out? Did yeah. You guys built those? Yeah. yeah. Freaking cool. saved our lives. Yeah. yeah. It really yeah. saved our lives. We did get, we get to one, and the next one, we're like, all right, we see that one, see the one behind us, and we just, like, That's try fun. to keep a line of sight. They were really easy to see. That was awesome. The eight explorers are reunited. And thanks to their perseverance, they still have 48 hours to make it to the summit. You guys want to hunker down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might as well get comfortable. Spend the night here and see what the weather looks like in the morning and yeah. make a decision then. Sounds great. It seems like more than enough time to get to the summit. But now, there's a raging snowstorm outside. You can only fight mom and nature so far. So we're really going to have to look for a break in the conditions to be able to function on this mountain. You know, there is possibility we're not going to be able to summit this thing. You know, that would be a hard pill for us all to take because we really would all like to end up on the summit together. As the second day draws to a close, the wind chill factor drops well below 10 degrees. All night long, 45 mile per hour winds pound the ridge. And as morning breaks, the storm rages on with no let up, making it nearly impossible to see or climb. How's the weather? Not much to change. The men have less than 30 hours left to reach the summit. Time to make a tough call. Stay or go. Here's the deal. We have choices. One is to sit here and enjoy the comforts, if you will, of a Quonset hut on top of a mountain with a raging storm outside. Or open that door and head for that summit. And it seems like all these guys want to go for the summit. From base camp, the summit is up a dangerous icy ridge line. Me, it looks like we got a few more miles. So we are right, 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 right that ridge, right there, man. And we're gonna go. Yeah. So we definitely need to move today. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that turtle. Unless it sticks its neck out, it goes nowhere. Let's get out there. We don't know what's gonna happen unless we stick our necks out. Let's hope. Let's open that door and get back in the elements. Let's roll. Back it up. The wind blasts at 45 miles per hour. Visibility is near zero. Still, the men decide to go for it. It's not the first time that I've stepped out into a storm, raging, intentional. It's what you do if you're a mountain climber, in Alaska especially. If you're not tough, you know, you're not going to make it. But the higher they climb, the worse it gets. The whole time we've been up here, the visibility hasn't been better than 15 feet. Uh, and now, visibility is the front of your hand and your face. It's about zero. Uh, uh, all of a sudden, my crampon breaks. Uh. The others have no idea Austin's fallen and push on. There's nothing I can do to fix it right now. Uh. Austin recovers, only to find himself completely alone in a whiteout. Where are they? Guys! Hey! Hey! On the 
Juno Ice Cap at 4,400 feet. Where are they? Austin Manella, the youngest member of the expedition, has been accidentally left behind. Yay! I yelled as loud as I possibly could shout. By then, they were already gone. They were up and over the ridge, and there's no finding them. In these conditions, on his own, Austin knows that the odds of survival are slim. Really, it, it's a life-or-death situation being turned around like that, and the only person you can rely on is yourself. You've got to keep your head, or you will die. hiking in a snow globe right now. You can't look in any direction and see more than a couple feet any one way. Hey, where's Austin? Where'd he go? Austin! Where is he? Austin! Did you see him recently? You see him at all? No, I said no, I just shot straight off down here. In these conditions, you can't see very far at all. Our number one priority is trying to make ourselves heard, and that's going to be the best way to reconnect. Dude, I'll give him a signal shot if he's, if he's close by. Here, Austin! Know. The best chance we have at making ourselves visible and noticeable is going to be firing some shots in the air. Here. just a momentary lapse and Austin was gone. That's as quick as it happens. You don't know what happened. Did he take a misstep on a steep snow slope and end up sliding a thousand feet down on a glacier someplace? You have no idea. Hey, All they can do now is look, listen, and hope. Hey, there's Austin! Austin! Finding those guys was just a moment of relief where very large prayer was answered. It couldn't have came soon enough. Oh my god, guys, bring it in for a second. Oh, oh my god. The men are reunited, but the weather shows no signs of letting up. It's decision time. Well, boys, what do you think here? This is, uh, this is crazy. <laughs> it's a good try, but this is a uh, pretty serious thing. An Alaskan standard. This weather is not something that you tell me a mountain in. We're all bullheaded. We're all crazy. We all want to get this done. But sometimes you have to be smarter than you are tough. And at the same time, we're going to do everything within our power to get to the top. The weather's going to do what it's going to do, but we have to be ready if this weather gives us that opportunity. It was worth the shot. Now we know at least we're not being oh, yeah. freaking complete yeah. wusses by staying in here. I don't think there's any question in anybody's mind. We're now playing the waiting game for a while longer. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. As the men settle in for their last night on the ridge, Marty knows they only have one shot left at completing the final leg of their expedition. This is it, 24 hours away from either making or breaking this thing. But the weather's not cooperating, you know, so it's kind of a contemplative moment, you know, looking inside ourselves, knowing that we might not make that summit. That hurts. That really hurts. Let's not lose track of the fact that summit fever kills. Yeah, we all want it, and I think we want it bad. But, you know, I don't want to get blown off this thing and take a 4,000-foot ride down the rock face on the other side, either. Anxious to reach the summit, the men will get little sleep tonight. The wintry darkness blankets the sky for more than 13 hours. Dawn at base camp. The explorers now have less than five hours to make the summit at Observation Peak. It was kind of interesting how this went down. Wake up in the morning, wind's howling, nobody's packing. Kind of somber, but we all start packing. We're packing to go up, not to go back down. Everybody just knew we're going to make another attempt at the summit. I'm ready to move. Yeah. I am too. It's the best opportunity we've had. Let's try it. You open that door of the Quonset, first step out in those elements. Boom! It's in your face. It's there. The wind, the sleet, the rain, the snow, nonstop. Dude, this weather's crazy, man. What do you guys think? This is the best place to be hanging up. They're less than a mile from the summit, but it's a treacherous route and only getting harder. When you're climbing mountains that have mixed rock and ice, obviously crampons will be on your feet. Crampons are not designed for rock, but they're designed for ice and snow. When it's mixed, you have to get used to that. The strong, strong winds on the ridge, 
and the crampons on the rock, that whole combination could be a recipe for disaster. That's a rock here. This is four-wheel drive. Watch the footing. This rock is good, man. Juno ice cap. Making their way towards the summit at Observation Peak, the eight explorers are struggling on the ice-covered rocks in the 45 mile per hour winds. Careful, 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 careful. And I heard Marty yell. I looked, turned around, and he was gone. We're in emergency mode. I mean, it was the greatest fear. Somebody falling, unrope. Let's rock my knee. It looked bad. He was laying there groaning, and it looked like the expedition was over. And we need to get Marty out of there as quickly as possible. You crack your head at all? No, 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 no. no. Okay. no just uh, trip when I went down. A rock, boom, hit underneath my kneecap. This cannot stop me. I got this huge shot of adrenaline. Boom! The pain started to subside. I actually started moving my leg a little bit. You rub it and you tweak it. Maybe this is just a bruised knee. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'll make it. Let's go, man. The summit's right there. Are you get it? All right. This was one of those days where the call of the wild was loud and clear, incessant. It was ringing in my ears. Can I buy your ice axe for this? Just this section. Sure. It gave me the fuel. It gave me the push to persevere and head for that summit. Let's do it. Let's get up there. Let's do it. Have you summited the valley and stuff like this? Worse. As they near the summit, the men finally catch their first break. I'm not really a poet or a romantic, but it seemed like Alaska handed us a gift for our resilience, our Alaskan spirit, and there was a break in the weather. The clouds seemed to lift a little bit, and the snow subsided. It just added to the excitement. <laughs> oh, yeah. You must be getting close. As we go higher and higher, the stakes get higher and higher. Now, when you fall down, it's not a little gradual slide that you lose 100 feet of hiking. It's a several hundred foot slide to a cliff. There's serious consequences for a misstep at this point. After Marty's close call just moments ago, Willie decides to take the men's safety into his own hands. Well, the feet here, the cliff, the moon go away. I was about to fight along up and we could set this axe and throw this rope down. Just if anybody needs a hand line, then it'll be there. Yeah. All right. All right. Get it on. We don't want to let summit fever get the better of us. We've gotten this far in this expedition without serious incidents and without any kind of serious injuries, and I think we'd all like to keep it that way. One steep step to the summit, man. This is the end of our trip. This is the steep section. This is it. Using his ice axe as an anchor, Willie ties off his climbing rope, which the others will use as a handline for the final steps to the summit. Looking good up here, guys. All right, let's go. Ow! With the summit close at hand, the men begin their final push, knowing that they're just minutes away from completing a journey they set out on two months ago. My whole life has been just checkered with finding insane goals. The more difficult, the better. The more people that say you can't do it, the more I want it. That's what I live for, is reaching those peaks, metaphorically and, in this case, literally. We have a reservation with the top of this mountain. Let's make sure we're not late. We're almost there. We had worked really hard for the last 10 weeks. But uh, it didn't matter all the stuff you've done to get here. It was all about this moment in time, right now, right here, if we were going to give it our all and do everything we could to get to the top of that summit. Just up ahead. Whoa, 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 whoa. Be careful, man. This entire expedition has been a character builder. I learned how deep I can really dig and what I'm really made of. Yeah! Looking good, boys. You know, the final steps at the summit, it really was the culmination of two months of being beat up by wild Alaska. The realization that Despite everything, the weather in the state of Alaska thrown at us in the last two months, we actually were able to persevere and pull it off. It's those who persevere that are often rewarded in that way. Everything that we did for two months was flashing through our heads. Yeehaw! Eight men traveling the expanse of the state of Alaska. Ooh, man. We traversed from 100 miles north of the Arctic Circle. Unbelievable! Yeah. Oh, to 
Lunaback Island, out far west as you can go. Oh, that's a bear, you guys. Ooh. We were waist deep, literally, in Alaska. This is some dangerous ass country. Please be careful, guys. <sighs> the wildness, the vastness, the places we saw. Cattle. Oh, look at that, look at that. Oh. <laughs> it's indescribable. I don't know how it could get any rougher. It just rekindled my love affair with Alaska. I know what you're thinking. Good thing I brought a big gold pan. <laughs> Alaska is truly the last frontier. Standing on top of that summit, I was humbly reminded how vast Alaska is and wide as I came here 40 years ago. Adventure beckons and awaits anyone that wants to step into that vastness. It's here. What a great ending to a great trip.